What's up guys? Today I'm here exploring a beautiful, huge uh, garden called Winterthur in Delaware, just over the uh, Pennsylvania-Delaware border. This was an old um, DuPont family estate. And the DuPonts, if you don't know, um, they had a, a real keen feel for, for plant life. Um, and they did a really good job at preserving a lot of plant life. Um, but anyways, I just kind of wanted to talk about some of the things that give me inspiration for for life, just generally speaking, but also for my own personal garden. When I have the opportunity, I try about once every, I don't know, two weeks or more often if I can, to go visit various gardens in the area. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's my, it's, I call it my day of garden hunting. And what it does is not only does it help me to appreciate the landscapes and the natural beauty, but it gives me lots of great ideas of plants to use in my own garden. Um, it's so important. And the cool thing is, is that, okay, you guys are, are all garden lovers, you know this, but it's good to be reminded. You can visit the same garden every two to three months and the whole energy is sh shifted, it's changed. And so the last time I was here, I was here in the early springtime. I was seeing all the wonderful uh, minor bulbs blooming like bluebells and um, uh, chin chinodoxa, I can't remember how you say that, chinodoxa, um, a bunch of daffodils, lots of really beautiful things like that. And now I'm here, it's the end of summer, and um, one, some of the things that are really s catching my eye out here in this meadowland are all the wonderful ornamental grasses and um, they had a there's just a ton of golden aster growing amongst these uh, fields and that reminded me oh there it goes did you see him no there was a couple of deer um the wildlife also beautiful but uh, what i was reminded of is the fact that when you go to these gardens every few months and every season these were professional gardens done, designed, created, maintained by professional gardeners, and they have a lot of amazing things to teach us. And so when I was seeing all that, all the golden aster, it was a great reminder. All right, I need to make sure that, okay, of course I wanna have beauty year round, every season that I can, but the golden aster is one of the very best pollination friendly plants that exist. And at the end of, August when most of our other you know summer bloomers that are we're feeding all of our bees and hummingbirds and butterflies all summer long as those plants start to finish well what are they gonna feed on if you don't have food for them to feed on then they're going to leave your garden and that's you know one of the things we love is we love watching the pollinators at play in our own gardens and um, so when you visit when you're visiting these gardens you're getting the, the natural beauty of the day i mean look it's just like gorgeous out here um but it's also hugely inspiring and rem and, and great reminders um so when i get home i'm gonna create a list of wonderful fall blooming fall pollination friendly plants um and the other thing that i think is probably okay a lot of us we have great ideas or or plants, flowers that we love, but it's the meat and potatoes that can really create the garden. And when I talk about meat and potatoes in, in, a, gar in a garden, you know, I'm a vegan, so vegan meat and potatoes. No, so what I'm talking about are, are the shrubs and the trees. So when you come to gardens like this, which have beautiful trails, you know, ex very expansive areas, um, it's my personal favorite place, places to actually get inspiration for the shrubs and the trees that I want to grow. Oh, look at these beautiful little wildflowers. Something in the pea family, I'm not sure what, but how beautiful. Um, so you can get a lot of really great ideas instead, you know, yeah, it may take a little bit of searching to find those plants, probably somewhere online and you're gonna get little babies, but you can get some really cool special stuff and these are the places that you go and see them and really the network of gardens botanical gardens is really well it's a wonderful it's a wonderful community um i know here in pennsylvania the pennsylvania Hortic or i guess i'm in delaware now but the pennsylvania horticulture society they have like this you know 
passport that lists all the really beautiful botanical gardens in the area. And when you go to one, you can just go, you know, assuming the visitor shop is open, um, go and talk, do some online research, and you can get, you know, an idea of the next one to go to somewhere else. Yeah, sometimes I'll drive an hour and a half, two hours to get to a garden, and it's always worth it. Um, because driving even an hour and a half, two hours away, you could be in a whole different climate. And so you just see a whole different kind of garden, a whole different kind of plant life. And that is equally inspiring. Um, but anyways, so I just kind of wanted to talk about some of the, re like, some of the reasons are obvious why I love to go to gardens. Um, but to put it into words, oh, there's some butterflies at play. Anyways, oh, one of my favorite, favorite weeds the Queen Anne's Lace. Um, oh, you see all the, see that yellow right there? That's all the golden aster and it's everywhere. It's gorgeous. All, all the pollinator, uh, pollinators are gonna be really happy um, about that. They're just starting to bloom. Anyways, I'm Devin and I hope that, uh, you know, filled your last five minutes with a little bit of plant vibrations and the, the love of nature and, and, um, the beauty that that is plant life. I'll catch you later.